Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy! Welcome back to more Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening in the last episode! We experienced one of my favorite moments in the story with the ghost. And we also got ourselves 20 secret seashells, powered up our sword to have beams, used the power of color to turn blue, getting ourselves defense, and we also discovered a very naughty long distance relationship. Shame on you, goat. In this episode, we are going to be heading... Wow, that didn't take long for me to take damage. We are going to be heading to the south, heading... My god! Oh. Wow! Okay, let's start from the top. I want to head over here. I did not mean to head south there, just for me taking wrong turns for some reason. And what we want to do is, what do you have to say? When I was swimming at the bay, the waves took a very important necklace from around my neck. If you find it, I will let you take a scale from my tail. Okay. So, we have a mermaid there that'll tell us that. Now, we had this owl statue last time around. Tell us that there's secrets like water under a bridge. What we want to do is, we want to go under the bridge. Check it out. We have a fisherman down here. I need the rock's feather. Wonderful. Oh, what is that you have in your hand? It's not a fishing hook, is it? You had better let me have it. I'll give you my next catch if you let me have it. Okay, okay, fine. Keep your eyes open and watch a pro at work. My, that's a big one! It's a necklace that's bigger than our entire body! Lucky! I can't wait to see what I'll catch next. So now that we have that, how about we head on over to that mermaid because we have that necklace. Now, interesting thing, in the Japanese and limited European releases of Link's Awakening, this was not a necklace at all. It was a bikini top, which is why she looks kind of embarrassed, but she has that blush on her and why she will not come out of the water. So we do this. Ah, that's it. That's my necklace. Give it. Give it back. I will give you a scale, as I said. Okay, we'll give it to her. So then we get to go down. Promise, you'll only take one. Link. Oh, he's so lucky. He returned the necklace and got a scale out of the mermaid's tail. How will we use this? Well, I'm sure we'll find a way. So now she'll hop out of the water now that she has her bikini top in disguise left through American censorship. Okay. So we have traded a lot of items. We have come a long way since getting that Yoshi doll in the trendy game. So there's really, really not all that much left here. We are only going to be trading for a little bit longer, but I think we've been side questing enough, plus we can't go any further in this trading sequence. So how about we continue with the story? How about we go through the water right here and just kind of see what we can find? Because remember, like I said, we have a lot of freaking stuff that we can do now, and whoa, check it out. Well, how about we dive underwater right here? We now find ourselves in a cave. Swim under here. Surprised we aren't finding Captain Gills with a bunch of skeletons of Flopsidians down here. And here we are. Welcome to Catfish's Maw. What do you know? A dungeon that actually doesn't have a key to it or any kind of trick to entering it. It's just dive under the water and walk in. So, we've come a very long way. Right here, we are going to probably be getting... Well, you'll see. I shouldn't spoil anything. We got ourselves a piece of power together with our powered-up sword. That's a dangerous combination, I'll say that much. You're going to notice there's a lot of inaccessible treasure chests. Every Zelda, ge every Zelda game does this, where, you know, there'll be treasure chests that you can see, but you can't get. It's not until you get the dungeon item that you can find it. But it's especially true in Catfish's Maw. Like, really, really prominent. You're going to see a lot of chests that you just can't get. Right off the bat right here, we have the compass, which definitely is welcome that we're getting this early on, so no secret keeping from us. We know if there's a small key in a room, period. So we don't have to do any guessing. Let's head on down these stairs. And platforming. Whoa! This is actually kind of that scale's really, really touchy. Let's hop, hop, hop. There we go. I did surprisingly well there. We got ourselves a key in this room already. And I'd like to get restored back to full health so I can fire my beams at these guys. Come on. I want to fire my beams. I want to fire my laser. Can I do it? Oh, of course, now that they're all dead, I get it. What we want to do is we want to destroy all these crystals. And we want to push these together to make an even square. That gives us our first small key. All right, not bad. Now, this room right here, you're going to be seeing a few rooms like this. You want to memorize that this is here. Just saying. I also would take note of the four blocks that are in the corner. 
Sounds kind of weird, but trust me on this, it's something you want to remember. Like I said, it, sound, it sounds like it's nothing important at all, and it seems like a pointless room, especially because you don't hear a chime when you go in there after getting the compass, but I just wanted to say that that's there. So, let's go ahead and take out you guys, let's exit here, and use the small key on the only place we can, up here. So, stall post, you can die, please. And I just want to say, um, I apologize for the music getting annoying, though, but you're seeing, like, just how awesome the white sword really is. It's just, I can't really get over it. It's just awesome, and, ah, blade traps didn't get me there. Let's hit you. Can I hit you? Can I hit you? Please? Thank you. There we go. And this door finally opens. Good. Hop over that. And in this room, if you want to stop by here, you got bombs. I don't really think there's anything else of note here. I'll see if there's anything in these pots, but I doubt it. Just so you know, uh, you can defeat these enemies by throwing pots at them. I guess that's one thing that's worthwhile about this room that I could tell you, even though I kind of get said sooner. Hey, there is a chest in here. We got ourselves the stone beak. Good thing I checked. Okay. So, should we run into an owl statue? We haven't done that yet. Maybe we will. Oh, wow, these blade traps actually don't even hurt us because of the blue tunic. Not bad. We got ourselves... A set of arrows up there. We don't have anything that we can use that on yet, but perhaps we will very soon. In fact, um, some might recommend that you do come into this dungeon with that bow that is sold in Mabe Village. However, you don't really need it right away. It might make things a little bit easier for you. I wasn't going to bring it up until we got here, just for the simple fact that... Wow, um, that really sucked. Okay, there we go. Got over that. So let's head up the only way we can, and we see that there is a treasure chest that, once again, we cannot yet obtain. It kind of sucked that I had to take damage to show this, I just kind of wanted to show that it's here, because once again, Dungeons and Link's Awakening, like many early Zelda games, are all about seeing things that you can't get, and then remembering them for later, and then using that as a bit of a footnote to know where to go, and I almost did it perfect that time. Dang it. So there's not much of importance over here. There was that stone beak, but I just kind of wanted to show that that other area of the dungeon was there, just in case, you know, you're wondering about it. Right here we have an owl statue, so it wasn't a complete waste that we went that way, because now we can see whatever hint it had for us, although it's probably something very obvious. Let's see what it is. If you can't destroy a skeleton with your sword, try using a bomb. Okay. Wouldn't you know it, very well-timed hint, because we got ourselves this guy. He is known simply in-game as Captain Skull. I am not sure if he has another name than that. I never really researched it. If you want to take him down... No. Wow. Um, holy crap. Wow. Um, wow. Uh, oh, he jumped into that. Come on. Come on. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Red potion. Um, dang. Uh... Okay, what you want to do here is use your sword to stun him and then use a bomb. I don't know why I was trying to use a bomb on him in the first place because he was hopping around and I took a lot of damage right there, so forgive me if that was a bit painful, but... <laughs> oh well. Let's go ahead and just keep hitting him. Ah, I can't beat you. I'm out of here. So he runs off. And we go over here. I've got what was inside this box. Come and get it if you can. Master Skull. Oh, Master Skull, not Captain Skull. Excuse me. I don't know. I, I'll i put on screen if he's got another name, though, but I always just called him Master Skull. I like that name. He's just like, I'm Master Skull, yo. I don't know. I just always find that kind of funny. So, basically, the gimmick of this dungeon, as you saw right there, is that the dungeon item that we would normally get is gone. So, we need to hunt down Master Skull, and we need to obtain it from him. He keeps running away from us, and we just have to keep on- Wow, I killed that cheap cheap by jumping on it without even trying. He just kind of jumped into my feet and got killed. Um, wow, and I did it again. That was kind of funny. Stairs right here. We go through- Here? Wow, um, kind of jerkish, actually. I think this is another area that you want to remember for later. Uh, we got ourselves some mimics right here. Let's go ahead and hit you. Dive under where the torchlight be torch beams do cross. Okay, that's actually pretty helpful. Heading over here, we can see that the nightmare's door is right here, so we know exactly where it is for later. So, that's kind of useful, I suppose. I do kind of apologize that this video is mostly just kind of going through the dungeon and just kind of looking over things and showing what we can do later. But I just kind of like doing that, just kind of showing each nook and cranny, so that way we know exactly where to go after we get stuff. It's just... I always find it kind of a better way to just kind of show people how to go through dungeons. I mean, because I understand that there are people that use this as a walkthrough and don't use these, you know, just purely to listen to my commentary and just kind of really want help as well. So for those people, I try to make it easy to understand what it is I'm doing. You know, just that kind of thing. So we'll head over here. 
Let's push this up. And get away from you. And what do you know? We finally have some more of these things. Been a while since we've seen these, and I will try to be courteous and try to not pick up that piece of power over there. Oh, shut up, game. My god, that's like the thing of this LP is I'm always like, shut up, game, every time it gives me tutorial text like so far into the adventure. So, um, what the owl was telling us there, this was actually a very helpful hint. Uh, I wouldn't think to do this on my first run. He said to dive underwater where the torchlight beams do cross. So imagine right here. Down here we have bloopers! Oh my god, bloopers! I hate you in most games, but I like you for being the thing that spawned Bowser's arms. Oh, Bowser, how I hated you and Sticker Star for having no personality, but how I still wanted your arms so bad. Anyway, we could dive through here, but we actually can't do what's on the other side there. I just kind of wanted to show that that's the point that Al was telling us about. So, now that we've done that, let's pick up some pots and see what we can do here. We got ourselves a heart. We got ourselves nothing. So, this room is a bit of a dead end. If you look at our map, not that map, this map... We can see that we got some chests just over to the right of us. So what we want to do there is, now that we've kind of get seen a bit ahead in the dungeon, we want to head over here, and now we can actually push this, and we can press the switch. You have to kind of leave this room and come back a lot should you want to see everything that's in it. Case in point, if I want to get over here, I gotta leave and come back and then go over this way. This right over here. Check it out, Master Skull. We hit him as soon as he comes down. We bomb him. There we go. Hit him as soon as he comes back up. I think. Please. Please. There we go. He's really not that hard of a boss. I'm actually kind of sad that I would have died to him if I didn't have that. Ah, oh, I can't beat you. I'm out of here. I'm, I'm kind of sad that I didn't do so well against him the first time around because he's really not a challenging boss. Like, I'll, I'll be the first to admit that that was kind of one of the worst enemies for me to have a tough time on. Uh... Okay, apparently this is useless now. I was just kind of curious what it would do if I did step on it, because I didn't really think to do that before, and yeah, apparently nothing. Let's hit the Stalfos Knight, and let's hit you. Okay, and what is over here? Got ourselves more bombs. I could really use those. This room is very useful to stop off in, because I really could have used those bombs. And... I get the feeling there's something useful in you. Once again, we have yet another chest that I can't do anything about. That just seems to be a theme of this dungeon, like I said. It, like, more so than any other, like, old Zelda dungeon, it's always, like, chests that you can't do anything with, you know, chests that you just can't collect no matter what you do. It's kind of annoying, actually. Right here, we've come full circle. We are back to exactly where we were. And what we need to do is we need to lure the Zola over here and hit him with our sword. Doing that, we'll open this, and check it out. We now have the three-block room. So, third time that we're fighting Master Skull. We want to hit him as soon as he comes down. Bomb him. With our whole 22 bombs. Holy crap, I didn't realize I had that many. Let's... Let's chop up... Actually, you know what? Let's, uh... Come on. Get out of my way. There. I said... There you go. Jeez. I kind of wanted to, like, kill him by chopping off his toe like I did in Majora's Mask. Like how I did that. Ah, oh, I can't beat you. I'm out of here. So he flees once again. And with that, we have ourselves a treasure chest. Now, I'm pretty sure you remember that there was a room that I told you to remember with four blocks early in the dungeon. That is where we need to go for our final encounter with him. For here, we get the dungeon map. And what do you, and with any luck, and with what luck, we have ourselves this right here, a heart. So we can not quite get back to full health. Of course, I'm half a heart short of being at full health, so I can't get my sword beams back. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to meet you guys back at the start of the dungeon and we will take on Master Skull for the last time. So, platform across these scales. We'll see if I do just as good of a job the second time as I did the first. And wow, apparently not. Let's try this a second time. No sense bidding, bidding, getting all heard over one failure. Head over this way. Let's take out these Stalfos. I could really go for a heart right now. I'd like to have my sword beams back. Thank you. Okay. So here we go. Our final encounter with Master Skull, because, well, there's not more than four corners in any of these rooms. So, it sounds like a perfectly logical reason for this to be the final encounter to me. We bomb him. We knock him down as soon as he gets back up. We hit him with a bomb again. And our very, very long-winded four-part boss fight is... Done! Oh my god, we got the hook shot. How I've been waiting for that. It's chain stretches long when you use it. Okay. 
I am thinking there's an innuendo in there somewhere, but I don't know where it is. So, if you can think of one, maybe you can tell me. <laughs> Now that we have the hookshot, the dungeon item, we can now get all those treasure chests that we couldn't get before. Which I think we should save for the next episode. So next time on The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, we are going to be finishing up things here at Catfish's Maw. See you guys then.